Welcome to Contractor Safety Onboarding. Over the next 30 minutes, I will go over the safety procedures out here at Rolls-Royce. Please pay close attention to everything said in the video as there is a quiz that will be administered after the video. Emergency numbers on site are 5555 if using a Rolls-Royce phone or 317-230-5555. Please use these phone numbers instead of 911 during emergency calls. Rolls-Royce is dedicated to providing a world-class safety process to ensure a safe work environment for all employees, contractors, and visitors. Rolls-Royce is one of the most exciting companies in the world. Our engines provide the power for just about every type of aircraft imaginable. We power ships and submarines, pipelines, platforms, even cities. Every day, we are responsible for the well-being of hundreds of thousands of our customers. As a global company, we are also responsible for the thousands of people who visit or work at the hundreds of Rolls-Royce sites across the world. And this is a responsibility we take very, very seriously. Many of the people who work at Rolls-Royce are contractors providing services from construction to IT, from logistics and maintenance to reception and security. Many contractors are only with us for a day or so. Others might work with us for several years. Our health, safety and environmental processes for contractors are just as rigorous as those for regular employees. They set the standards we expect you to follow anywhere in Rolls-Royce, but they have also been carefully designed to be flexible and to cover all types and areas of work. One of the key values at Rolls-Royce is being trusted to deliver excellence and this is as true in health, safety and environment as in everything else we do. Protecting health, safety and the environment is not just a matter of following the rules. Just as important, it's thinking about what you're doing, doing everything you can to keep yourselves, those around you and the environment safe. Before you start work at Rolls-Royce, you or someone from your organization may be required to visit the site and check all the areas you'll be working in. This inspection is the basis for your risk assessment or similar document. Depending on the hazards involved in your job, the risk assessment may have been done before you arrive on site, or you may do it with your contractor supervising officer before starting work on your first day. When you arrive at Rolls-Royce, you must have any documentation you've been asked to bring relevant to the site inspection. Your high-vis vest and any other safety equipment specified in your risk assessment or site inspection. And you must know the name of your contractor's supervising officer. Without these, you will not be given your pass allowing you on site. Before starting work, we review with you the rules we expect you to follow. This video is part of that company induction. There will also be a site-specific induction. Your contractor supervising officer, your key contact at Rolls-Royce, will then escort you onto site and go with you to your work area. Here, you and your contractor supervising officer will carry out a local review of the area and the work you'll be doing. The supervising officer will tell you about any hazards or specific procedures in this area and the minimum standards of personal protection equipment that will be required to work in the area. You must make sure your supervising officer is fully aware of any potential hazards you're bringing on site welding equipment or flammable materials, for example. This review is an important part of our health, safety and environmental process. It ensures that both Rolls-Royce and contractors understand the work you're doing and any impact it may have on other people working in the same area. The supervising officer will then sign your work authorization form, allowing you to begin work at Rolls-Royce.
There are three key things to remember while working at Rolls-Royce. 1. You must wear a high visibility vest whenever you're carrying out physical work on site. If you do not, you will be dismissed without warning. 2. Whenever you arrive or leave the site, your contractor supervising officer must be informed. And 3. Always work in the area and to the guidelines that were established in your first meeting with your supervising officer. If you need to change that approach or work in a different area, you must get your contractor supervising officer's permission. Your contractor supervising officer or CSO is the person you should always contact if you have any problems or queries. For example, if anyone else asks you to stop work for any reason, do so if it's safe, but then refer back to your CSO as soon as possible. Your CSO will visit you at various times while you're working at Rolls-Royce. You may or may not get advance warning. And when your work is completed, your SO will review it with you before you both sign off the work authorization form. We may also ask you to provide feedback about our health and safety processes. This helps us to ensure they remain relevant and are working properly. It will be clear by now that at Rolls-Royce, we take protecting health, safety and environment seriously. We expect you to do so as well. Any breach may result in you being dismissed from the site. In extreme cases, your company may be removed from the approved vendor list. We say this not to be heavy or threatening, but because health, safety and the environment is so important to us. We are responsible for thousands of people across hundreds of sites, 24 hours a day. We often work in difficult environments and everything we do has to be of the highest quality. We must have a total commitment to health, safety and environment with zero tolerance of any failures in that commitment. You and all our contractors are part of our success. We need you to help us ensure the safety of all our employees, contractors and visitors and the continued protection of the environment. Thank you. Rolls-Royce has a set of zero harm life-saving rules. There are five always and five nevers. Always speak up and report unsafe acts. Always wear your seatbelt and obey speed limits. Always wear mandated PPE. Always protect against falls and always adhere to approved lifting methods. Never, never use or program a handheld device when driving. Never work or drive under the influences of drugs or alcohol. Never assume electrical equipment is isolated. Always test with free touch. Never deactivate or bypass safety critical equipment and never in a confined space unless trained and authorized. Unique aspects of working at Rolls-Royce. Renovation and construction alongside Rolls-Royce production. Communication-centered safety approach. Not all utilities can be isolated or eliminated. Old construction. Not all drawings are correct. New contractors on site almost every day. Job planning. Task hazard analysis. A task hazard analysis, also referred to as a job hazard analysis or a job safety analysis, is a job planning form that focuses on daily jobs tasks as a way to identify hazards before they occur. It focuses on the relationship between the worker, the task, the tool, and the work environment. THAs are completed by contractors daily. It sometimes changes throughout the day. The THA needs to keep up with the changes or be revisited. The components of a THA are the following. Listing all of the steps of the tasks, including mobilization and cleanup, identifying the hazards, and how you will control said hazards. The following is an example of a poorly completed THA. There is limited information in this THA that is needed to be pr provided for the work being handled. Fitting a pipe does not include the mobilization or the actual work that will be occurring. The hazards of hurting yourself is not an actual hazard. We would like to know the possible hazards of how you would hurt yourself. And being careful, we always want you to be careful on site, but we need to know how you are going to be careful. The following is a properly completed THA. It is filled out with all the pertinent information needed for the task, including all of the steps of the task, all the potential hazards, and how the hazards will be mitigated. 
Included in the THA is an impacts to surrounding trades and or Rolls Royce section. Information of noise, smells, dust, work below or work above or on the other side of the wall is included in this section. Each day with your team, you need to review the THA filled out for that day and have all of the workers sign off on it, discuss hazards in life, critical work, yours or if you know of any occurring around you, and review the permits that you will be using for that day. Talk not only about the work that you will be doing, but also the live critical work taking place around you. Make sure you are keeping open communication with everyone in your area, including fellow contractors or Rolls-Royce personnel. Review the known hazards, such as floor or ground openings, excavation, confined space, overhead work, scaffolding, electrical hazards or high voltage boxes, hazardous materials used or stored for the day. The following are permits in use here at Rolls-Royce. Hot work, confined space entry, crane lift operation, energized electrical work, excavation, and line opening. There is a contractor safety handbook in use here at Rolls-Royce. It is available upon request. If policies are changed, your leadership will be notified. Security and site access. Rolls-Royce is a DOD building, meaning it has very strict security policies that must be followed. Failure to do so could lead to site removal. Construction entrances must be secured with a lock at all times. These areas are locked with a daisy chain. Please ensure that they are daisy chained at all times, even when you are in these areas. Badge personnel. Badging and security training is done through Rolls-Royce directly. Enter through turnstiles using badge or through construction areas if accessible without having to scan badge. Badge may only be used for yourself. No piggybacking or loaning your badge. If you forget your badge, you need to get a daily temporary badge from the Rolls-Royce front office and use the call button at the turnstile. You will need your ID for this. Non-badge personnel or escort required personnel. They require an escort or someone who has been badged and has escort privileges through Rolls-Royce. They will go to the front desk every morning, receive a paper badge, and then go to a call box where they will show their escort's badge, their personal paper badge, and their photo ID. Please ensure you keep your photo ID on you at all times. Control of energy. Lockout tagout. Must be coordinated and scheduled with Rolls-Royce. Remember to plan ahead. Rolls-Royce is the first lock on and the last lock off. If lockout tagout affects other contractors in your area, let them know as soon as possible. Crane hoist and lifts. Must have a plan no matter how big or small. Must meet inspection requirements. Operator and rigor certifications must be maintained and available upon request. Must provide safety zone and barricade the swing radius and maintain throughout the entire lift. Critical lift plan if over 75% capacity. Demolition. Know and plan for hazards such as live electricity and utility. Only cut properly marked electrical lines or pipes. Stop and ask if you are unsure. Always suspect hidden utilities and hazards. Check the other side of the wall. Be mindful of demo debris to avoid personal injury. For those working on machine moves, stop and contact Rolls-Royce management if the area is unsafe. Check for slips and trips on the floor. Be aware of hazardous chemicals. Lockout tagout. Be aware of needing Rolls-Royce to be the first lock on, last lock off. Make sure all pieces are secured before disassembling. Pinch points, be aware and keep body parts out of them. Spotters are necessary when moving. Bolt down equipment if it is in a temporary location. Confined spaces, a permit is needed. And barricades are needed whenever working in Rolls-Royce areas. For those working around machine moves, check for slips and trips on the floor. Be aware of hazardous chemicals. Ensure nearby equipment is bolted down and secured. Consider covering equipment to prevent FOD or equipment damage. Electrical. GFCI is required at all times when using permanent power or when using power tools. Damaged or cut extension cords should be tagged and taken out of service. Keep cords out of the path of traffic. All electrical power tools and cords should be inspected daily prior to use. Environmental and hazardous materials. Be aware of asbestos, lead paint, and PCBs. SDSs for all substances used on site must be provided to the GC superintendent. Liquid chemicals must be stored in or on a spill containment to prevent chemicals from entering drains. Isolate, identify, and report all spills or releases. What is asbestos? A set of six naturally occurring silicate materials all share thin fibrous crystals with each visible fiber composed of millions of microscopic fibrils that can be released by abrasion or other processes. They are commonly known by their colors. Asbestos containing materials, ACM, only need to be made up of 1% asbestos. Properties of asbestos, why it was used. Good tensile strength, flexible, heat resistant, electrical resistant, good insulation, chemical resistant. Uses of asbestos, pipe insulation, surface insulating material, fireproofing, flooring, commonly nine inch tiles, and many, many other uses. Visible fibers can be a quick indication that a material is ACM. 
Also, the labeling of asbestos. Asbestos health hazards. Asbestos is most hazardous when it is friable. The term friable means that asbestos is easily crumbled by hand, releasing fibers into the air. Sprayed on asbestos insulation is highly friable. Asbestos floor tile is not. Asbestos containing ceiling tiles, floor tiles, undamaged laboratory cabinet tops, shingles, fire doors, siding shingles, etc. will not release asbestos fibers unless they are disturbed or damaged in some way. If an asbestos ceiling tile is drilled or broken, for example, it may release fibers into the air. If it is left alone and not disturbed, it will not. Exposure can lead to asbestosis, lung cancer, mesothelioma. A person may be affected but not realize it due to a latency period of 15 to 40 years. Risk depends on level and duration of exposure. What to do if you suspect asbestos? Always assume suspicious material contains asbestos. Never touch potential asbestos. This includes sweeping or moving it. Unless you are trained and qualified to do so, do not attempt to clean up. Stop work and clear the area. Notify safety. Place a barricade and signage indicating possible asbestos around the area to keep personnel out. Do not re-enter the area until the all clear has been given. What is lead? Lead is a naturally occurring element found in small amounts in the Earth's crust. While it has some beneficial uses, it can be toxic to human and animals. Lead can be found in all parts of our environment, air, soil, water, and even inside of our homes. Much of our exposure comes from human activities, including the past use of leaded gasoline, some types of industrial facilities, and the past use of lead-based paints in homes. Possible lead locations on site. Any paint and surface, including walls, decking, columns, pipes, and conduit. Health hazards. Adults exposed to lead can suffer from cardiovascular effects, increased blood pressure and incidence of hypertension, decreased kidney function, reproductive problems in both men and women. What to do if lead is suspected? Always assume it is lead. Do not grind, weld, scrape, or disturb it. Notify safety. Do not continue the work until an all clear is given that the area has been remediated. What is silica? Crystalline silica is a common mineral that is found in construction materials such as sand, stone, concrete, brick, and mortar. When workers cut, grind, drill, or crush materials that contain crystalline silica, very small dust particles are created. Workers who inhale these very small crystalline silica particles are at an increased risk of developing serious silica-related diseases, including silicosis, an incurable lung disease that can lead to disability and death, lung cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, kidney disease. In most cases, these diseases occur after years of exposure to respirable crystalline silica. OSHA Respirable Crystalline Silica Standard This standard requires employers to limit workers' exposure to silica and to take other measures to protect workers from the hazard. Essentially, there are two main routes for dealing with exposure, engineering slash administrative controls, exposure measurements with air sampling, monitoring, and analysis. The standard outlines 18 common construction tasks with effective dust control methods for different time periods in which a worker would be performing the task. The following pictures show a silica hazard with and without engineering controls. On the left, cutting a block without engineering controls creates a large cloud of silica. On the right, cutting a block using water to control the dust mitigates the risk. Demolition activities. Risks include falling objects, dust slash silica, moving equipment, and potentially nearby live utilities. Stay out of demolition areas unless the demolition contractor has given permission to enter for a specific task. Always communicate with the demolition contractor before entering demolition area. Cardox fire suppression. Fire suppression system used during engine testing is a gaseous carbon dioxide fire suppression system, which fills the room with carbon dioxide, pushing all of the oxygen out of the room, suppressing the fire. THA required for personnel working near Cardox. Working inside test cells, working in hallways near test cells. Training stickers required for all personnel working in Cardox areas. This is a separate training focused solely on Cardox. If Cardox alarm sounds or Cardox is released, exit the area immediately and report to supervisor until the all clear to re-enter is given by Rolls-Royce security. In the test cells of plant five, there is currently a red, yellow, green system for if the Cardox is live or dead. The green means that the test cell slash control room has been made safe from Cardox via air gapping or capping. There is no Cardox remaining hazard. If it is yellow, this test cell is to be locked out at all times unless engine testing is taking place. If it is red, this test cell has live Cardox. If contractor work needs to take place, call security before entering to ensure that the Cardox system is disabled.
The following pictures show live areas of Cardox virus prison system. Yellow shading indicates the areas. On the left is plant 5, with the assembly and test in the AEP room having live Cardox. On the right is plant 8, with the research building, ambient building, D facilities and combustion labs, and test cells 861 and 862 containing live Cardox. Excavation. Requires an excavation permit, must use ground penetrating radar and hydroback to identify utilities prior to use of mobile equipment. Must maintain sloping or stair steps if over 4 feet deep. Must keep soil and vehicle slash motorized equipment 2 feet from the excavating edge. All soil on Rolls-Royce property is identified as Class C and must be sloped at a 1.5 to 1 angle. Always install and maintain barricades around excavation and trenches. Fall protection. When working above 6 feet or within 6 feet of a leading edge, fall protection is required. 15 feet on the roof. This includes all area lifts, even if just getting in to move it. Retractable lanyards are required on site. Fall protection must be inspected before each use and take it out of service if compromised in any way. The only exception is platforms and scaffolding with approved railing. Correct harness fit. D-ring placement should be between the shoulder blades at the top of the back. Leg strap should be taunt and chest strap should be in the middle of the upper chest. Spotters, please make sure that your partner's harness fits correctly. If it does not, let them know before they go up in the lift. Housekeeping. Practice nothing touches the floor. Each subcontractor is responsible for their own trash and debris. Nail, wire ties, and other sharp items should be properly disposed of at the time of dismantling or stripping. Always keep walkways, stairways, and doorways clear of trash, carts, and equipment. When tools and equipment are not in use, move them out of the way. Working adjacent to Rolls-Royce. Fog control. Foreign object debris, tools and equipment, anything not nailed down that could possibly cause damage to an aircraft equipment or people. Foreign object damage, damage caused by foreign objects. Clean as you go. Account for all tools slash items and notify safety if you are missing anything. Motorized vehicles, equipment and utility vehicles. Operators must be certified to use this equipment. Max speed limit, six miles per hour in plane. Passengers can only sit in designated seating areas. Passengers cannot ride in buckets or bed. Refuel outside, at least 35 feet from the building. Motorized vehicles, scissor lifts, elevated and articular platforms. Always observe the maximum weight limits. Fall protection is required at all times, retractable lanyards only. Only use manufactured anchor points. Do not stand on rails unless approved by the project safety team in the daily THA. Always secure the safety gate slash chain before ascending. Lower the basket for driving distances. Always use barricades with signage while performing aerial work in Rolls Royce occupied areas. Spotters must be used for vehicles slash trucks, including delivery trucks. Spotters must be provided by responsible contractors. Forklifts, even when empty. Elevated lifts if barricades cannot be provided or are not in use. Only exception is lowered scissor lifts. Drivers must understand signals from spotters. Always keep spotter in view. Stop immediately when you cannot see spotter. Spotter must communicate what his signals will mean, must be positioned behind the vehicle when backing, must inform driver that if he leaves the line of sight, stop immediately. Basic PPE in construction areas. High vis vest or shirt, lime or yellow only, hard hat, safety glasses, safe to have shoes, gloves. 100% hand protection is required for the following trades. Electrical, mechanical, plumbing, carpentry, drywall, concrete, and demolition. Scaffolding. Must be inspected and signed off by a competent person daily before use. Must have green or yellow tag for use. Must use fall protection if incomplete railing or decking. Ladders. Ladders must be fiberglass and rated type 1A or 1AA. Must be inspected daily. Fall protection must be used when workers' feet reach higher than 6 feet. Fire protection. A clear access pathway to fire extinguishers must be maintained at all times. Minimum 4 feet. Use additional fire extinguishers for tasks required work, such as hot work. Any welding or spark emitting activity should not be started until combustibles are covered, disposed of, or stored 35 feet away. Flammables must be stored in a flammable cabinet or outdoors at least 35 feet from the building. No drugs, smoking, firearms, or alcohol on site. Barricades. Work areas that are hazardous or require caution must be barricaded off with signage. Barricades must have proper signage at all times. Contractor, contact person, and phone number. Rolls-Royce First Construction Area In Rolls-Royce Production Slash Manufacturing Area, barricades with proper signage are required while performing work 100% of the time. This is true even if a spotter is in place. 
In construction areas, if you are performing a hazardous task, such as demo, welding slash cutting, painting, etc., a barricade with signage should be put in place to protect those passing by. Otherwise, you may have an either a spotter or a barricade in place. Red tape is required for barricades. Processes involving hazards with realistic potential to cause major consequences, including processes using flammable or explosive gases and liquids, flammable powders and dust, hazardous chemicals and pressure vessels or systems, which meet the definition of major hazards. Areas that are considered major hazards under Rolls-Royce are marked by the following sign. Special training is required for these areas. An example of a major hazard asset area is heat treat slash special processes. Heat treat slash special processes has the following chemicals in the area. Anhydrous ammonia, methane, carbon monoxide, quenchyl, cyanide, and hydrofluoric acid. Due to these hazards, a specialized training is needed to work in this area. Event management. Stop work and question anything that does not look or feel right to you. An event is any occurrence, positive or negative, worth noting on the job site. Events can occur due to lack of planning or failure to follow the plan, lack of risk management, lack of engineering control, lack of administrative control. Event management is a process, starting with the reporting of the event to safety or management, followed by an investigation and analysis to figure out the root cause of the event, and then corrective action planning and implementation takes place, along with a lessons learned narrative report that tells the story of the event. Reporting an event. Anything that is out of the ordinary. Near miss, property damage, injury, etc. Notify leadership or general superintendent. We want to capture the moment as a learning experience. If necessary, an event investigation will take place. Common safety reminders. Barricades and signage. 100% barricades is required in Rolls-Royce area. Barricades or a spotter is required in construction area. Spotters. If it moves and it's not in a barricade, a spotter is required. GFCI is required 100% on permanent power, flammable storage, use it, or 35 feet from the building. Deviation from the safety rules, always ask, and your work affects others. Thank you for participating in the Rolls-Royce contractor onboarding. Please proceed to the quiz.